rational explanation for these ballots that Susie Voles and Barbara Hartman found other than the fact that they are counterfeit ballots and they're still there in the count and the Secretary of State is blocking us from seeing it along with the Attorney General Chris Carr. One of the first things I did as Secretary of State was to ensure that ballot harvesting was illegal in Georgia. Yeah, right about that. Secretary of State implemented, I, I know, it's, it's, uh, this is, I know it's, uh, I know it's irritating some of you in the room uh, to listen to this, but this is true stuff. He, he, he gave this literally to the Congress. Uh, Brad Ravensburger implemented outdoor drop boxes. We didn't have a ballot harvesting problem in Georgia before 2020. Uh, that outdoor drop box scheme created the problem that exists. There were so many problems. We told them, do not do this. If you're going to do it, put it in the, uh, uh, let the post office take, the, take them. Um, and, you know, they already got cameras. They've got somebody who can check an ID, just like they do for a financial transaction. You can even give them a little bit of money. They'll, they'll do better. So uh, they, they came up with this scheme, and then they failed to ensure that the chain of custody forms were completed for them. On top of that, the video surveillance has been an absolute joke, as David Hancock has pointed out. Gwinnett wanted 15000 bucks for a video. Then, they, then later on, they took months and months to, uh, to and, you know, several counties took months again, uh, to get the videos, and then they've been destroyed. Uh, the chain of custody, nobody, he did, there was no even requirement to know how many ballots were entered in drop boxes statewide. Nobody knows. Nobody knows because only a couple of counties kept those, those records. So in reality, he facilitated ballot harvesting in Georgia, and that was the problem with the 2020 election. No specific allegations of ballot harvesting have been brought forward. Uh, I beg your pardon. Uh, in addition to the true vote complaint that had of 242 ballot harvesters, which he is now investigating, uh, which appears to be very credible, I am going to run this little video for you. And you're going to see a ballot harvester. You may have already seen this. We have put this out. But um, here he is coming up to the screen. He's taking a picture of after he's fanned out all the ballots, pictures so he can get paid, which uh, according to the um, truth of the vote was 10, 10 bucks a ballot is what the whistleblower said they were getting paid. And there he is stuffing them into the ballot box. The drop box is big enough to hold a library book, as David Hancock pointed out in the last, um, in the last uh, session, the last time we were here. Here's another one. Here's a ballot harvester counting his ballots and, and, uh, and dropping them in. So no evidence. Um, I think that's one of the, maybe that might, that might be the biggest Pinocchio that we've had so far. And now it's your turn, Bob. Um, but nevertheless, the MITRE Corporation's National Election Security Lab conducted a statewide ballot harvesting analysis for the November elections across Georgia's 159 counties, didn't they? So uh, I just have to back up and show this to everybody. This is the 10-page document. And this is the letter that went to the United States Congress. And I spoke to probably over a dozen senators in the Georgia Congress, and guess how many of them knew this letter went out? Zero. Speaker they Ralston did know it went out. But some of them did reference the MITRE report. I want the MITRE report. And, and we had spoke about the MITRE report, and I really didn't know what it was when I first read about it. But I thought, you know, it, it's data analysis, of election transparency, and there's nothing better than election transparency. But when you start looking at this report, the first paragraph it talks about in there about ballot harvesting, it says there's been no ballot harvesting in Georgia because no major network has said there was. That settles it. Now that is some brilliant analysis. Now, what they do, though, is they do do a lot of statistics in the front end, and they, they, they make it look like this great statistical analysis. And then I ran across 
what some friends, well, I don't want to say friends, what a, a group of scientists put together. So this is the analysis that MITRE put together that said, you know, if you look at mail, mailed in ballots versus mailed in ballot request, the relationship should remain the same. And if the relationship is different, you'll see an, an outlier on this line. Well, what they didn't look at as this group that did a critique on it is, what is this way out here? And then what this group did, because they do have a statistician on the group, is they took that same data and just rotated it on the axis. And if you can look, son of a gun, what's way out here? Fulton, Gwinnett, uh, DeKalb, Cobb. So when you look at the MITRE data and you actually analyze it for what's there, guess what? It shows four outliers and two of those outliers do indicate that there's enough data that would have overturned the election. So if anybody would like copies of these reports, it's some really interesting reading. And with that, I'm going back to you. Okay.